morning, everybody, and welcome to Zion. We're glad that you're here this morning on this beautiful spring day. It's been a long winter. Personally, I just want to thank you and give each of you a shout out for coming to church this morning. Uh, frankly, on a day like this, I know that it's difficult sometimes to decide to go to church when you would far rather be somewhere else. So thank you for coming, and uh, thank you for coming and joining us. Thank you to the Zion Praise Band and to Linda and Lindsay for leading us in some great worship this morning. Uh, we're just going to have a great time now as we look into God's Word. We're in the uh, book of John as we go through a series that we're calling Who Am I? The Seven I Am Statements of Jesus Christ. Seven statements that he makes from the book of John that uh, prove his deity and prove that he is indeed the Son of God and what that means for us as mere earthlings. So uh, we are up to the I am statement where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. That's found in John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I'd like to ask you to stand together as uh, we read God's word together. I'll be reading from the New International Version of the Bible. Uh, if you want to follow along in the Bible, the Bible's in the pew in front of you. That's page 1666. Uh, if you have your device, of course, you can use that or your own personal Bible. I'll be reading from the New International Version. Let's uh, read God's word together. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my shepherd, sheep, and I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay my life down for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. Would you pray with me, please? Father God, I thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here this morning. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for uh, dying on the cross for my sins, for uh, being our advocate before the Father. Holy Spirit, I thank you for being our wonderful counselor, for being our teacher, for giving us insight. I pray now, Triune God, that you would be here among us in this place, that you would allow us to be able to uh, set aside every circumstance that might be keeping us from uh, looking into your word and to sense your presence. I pray that the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth would be pleasing and satisfying to you as we go forth from this place. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as I said, we're starting our, or continuing our series, uh, Who Am I? Uh, the Seven I Am Statements of Jesus. And uh, last week we talked about the fact that Jesus was the gate of the sheepfold. And, and uh, my hope and prayer was to emphasize what it, that meant for us as sheep. Uh, this morning, as we look at uh, this next I Am statement, I want us to think more uh, along the lines of the shepherd. And with the shepherd, uh, <clears throat> what it means for us to have a good shepherd. Because that's what Jesus identifies himself in in, in that first verse that we read, John 10 11 where it says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. <clears throat> you know, one of my uh, favorite commercials that I've seen of late, uh, I don't even remember now what the uh, product is that it's selling, actually. I think it's insurance. Anyway, you probably have seen them, and the tagline basically is, when okay isn't okay. And the idea behind them all is, uh, that it's not okay to just have okay in some circumstances. Uh, one of my favorites is when you see the uh, guy that's about ready to take his first parachute jump, and he's up in the plane uh, looking over the edge to the ground way far below, and he screams in terror, looks back at his instructor and says, does it get easier after the first time? And the instructor looks over and he screams in terror and says, I don't know, it's not any easier the second time. When okay isn't okay. Yeah, another one that I like is when the husband and wife are in the hospital room uh, with the nurse, and they're all looking rather concerned about things. And and uh, the they suddenly you hear from the hallway, guess who just got reinstated? And the doctor walks in and says, well, almost. And he looks at the patient and he says. So, you nervous? And the patient and his wife go, yeah, we're nervous. And the guy says, yeah, 
The doctor says, yeah, so am I. Well, we'll figure this out. See you in the operating room. And he walks out, and everybody kind of looks at each other like, whoa, you know, okay isn't okay in a situation like this. Well, what I want you to realize this morning is that Jesus isn't an okay shepherd. He's a good shepherd. He's a shepherd that, you know, as I said earlier, the hired man runs away. John 10.13 says the hired hand runs away because he's working only for the money. He doesn't care about the sheep. And so it's nothing for him to throw the sheep to the wolves and, and to leave because he's only worried about saving his own neck. It's kind of like the story about the two guys that are being chased by a bear. And, and uh, the first guy is, takes off running. The second guy catches up to him and says, are you crazy? We'll never be able to outrun this bear. And uh, the first guy says, I don't need to outrun the bear. I just need to outrun you. you know, he's not concerned about anybody else but himself. You know, there's a lot of times when we get thrown to the wolves. We have a lot of people in our lives that are not good shepherds. They're okay shepherds. They're people that let us down. Uh, sometimes it's a spouse. Sometimes it's a boss. Sometimes it's just friends. Uh, a friend of mine just recently, he and his wife went through a situation in which she had breast cancer. And um, after they made through this thing, and he and I were talking one time, and I just asked him, I said, so I know it's been rough the last several months, but what was probably the hardest part for you going through this with your wife? And he said, you know, I think the hardest part for me, he said, my wife and I have always been the kind of people that would bend over backwards for other people. We would do anything if anybody was in need to try to help them out. And what I found out is that a lot of times the people that you're there for aren't there for you. So there were a lot of people that I was really hoping would be coming alongside of us, and they just weren't there. You know, he got thrown to the wolves, and I, uh, you know, I thought about that. I, I hope I'm not one of those people, uh, but there are people like that, and we know that there's people uh, that just don't care about us. And there's a lot of wolves out there. You know, uh, one of the wolves that I, I think we face every single day is social media, and I'm not going to say social media is bad, but uh, social media has changed the entire face of our culture. Uh, and whether you're on social media or not, you know, you might say, well, Pastor, I'm not on social media, so I don't care. But it doesn't matter if you're on it or not. It's changed so much of the complexion of our society that it's twisted us. Uh, things like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, you can, I, I've seen people say things to other people on social media that uh, I know they would never say face to face. But when you have that anonymity of social media, you can be a bully. Uh, you can be brutal to other people. You can tear them apart. There's so much hatred on social media. And um, I know I'm venting a little bit here, but uh, one of the things that concerns me the most about that is the number of people that I see on Facebook or Instagram, mostly Facebook, I guess, but uh that I know that uh, the brutal things that they say to other people, and it's just like, do you see what you're saying? And do you realize you're saying this stuff and claiming to be a Christian? It just, uh, I'll be honest with you, boggles my mind. But social media is a wolf, and uh, we need to be protected from it. Uh, another wolf that I see out there is relationships. Uh, you know, the story I told you about my friend, you know, there's a lot of times when um, we put our faith in people in marriage relationships and work relationships, uh, school relationships. We have people that we think are going to be our friends, and then at the drop of a hat, they can turn on us. Uh, I know you, I'm sure you've had that. I know I've had that, where people that uh, I've considered to be just great people and good friends, and, and all of a sudden, because of whatever, uh, they turn their back on you, and they throw you under the bus, and they're just brutal, brutal. Uh, relationships are a wolf that can just attack us and tear us apart. Uh, another real, uh, wolf that we get attacked by is our careers. You know, careers can... Uh, uh, can be brutal in the sense that they can take us away from family. They can get us uh, twisted around to focusing on things that really aren't important. Now, I read something one time where a guy said, I've never talked to somebody who has said on their deathbed, has said, I wish I'd spent more time working. I've never talked to anybody after a loved one had died that uh, has said about the loved one, I wish I'd spent less time with them. Uh, we, we get so caught up in the idea that money is important and then we get to that point in life where life ends and we realize, uh, or relationships end or whatever, we realize it wasn't worth it. Another wolf that uh, can attack us is our hobbies. 
you know, hobbies can, can be good things. In fact, they're healthy things. Uh, sometimes we need to have that, that release, that outlet of a hobby, which, have, with, which might be camping or might be hunting or, or woodworking or, or whatever your hobby happens to be. And, uh, but on the other hand, pretty soon that hobby can be so much of a, uh, a detriment that it pulls you away from other people, from family, from friends. And, and, another, and the, the fifth wolf that I thought of is ourselves. We can get so tied up in who we are and what we think and in our opinions that we lose complete sight of the fact that maybe we might be wrong. Or maybe, even if we are right, maybe we don't need to be the way we are. Uh, You know, one of the things I think about all these wolves, as I've been saying, you know, social media, relationships, careers, hobbies ourselves, none of them are bad things. Let me reemphasize that. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. Social media can be great. Uh, Relationships are fantastic. Uh, Careers, we need to have a good career. Uh, Hobbies are fun, and Jesus tells us we need to love God and ourselves. So all of those things are good, but the problem is when those uh, (coughs) wolves scatter us and take us away from who the shepherd is. And pretty soon we become our own shepherd because we're out on our own. We're, We're struggling to find ourselves. So this morning I want to ask you four questions, really. All of them center around the first question. And the first question is, who's your shepherd? Who are you really following? You see, when a sheep strays away from the fold, whether it's because of a wolf or a tiger or a bear, or just because they're stubborn, and any of you you that know sheep know that they're stubborn, when a sheep strays away from the fold, he becomes his own shepherd. He becomes the one that he's answerable to. So let me ask you, who is your shepherd? See, Jesus is the good shepherd, and he calls us to be uh, his sheep and to follow after us, to follow after him. And so the first question was, who's your shepherd? And, and there's three other questions that I want to ask you this morning that kind of feed back into that question. And the first question is, who am I? Who am I? Who are you? You know, that's a question that all of us ask from the time we're in junior high or earlier. We want to know who we are. It's one of the reasons in kindergarten that stickers are so uh, blasted important and sort of popular with kids. Little kids in kindergarten and first grade, they're crazy. They'll, they'll do anything for a sticker. Um, and it's because that sticker is not just a piece of paper with glue on the back. It's a sign that says, hey, I'm, I'm of value. I'm important. Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. You know, that's a huge promise to us. Who are we? We're Jesus' sheep. We're the ones that he gathers among him, uh, into his arms. Uh, you know, we try so hard to, to figure out who we are. Uh, each of you this morning made a decision this morning on what you were going to wear. And I don't just mean physical clothes. You each made a decision this morning that you were going to put on your church clothes. And again, I don't mean the, the cloth, the, the textiles. I'm talking about the attitude. I'm talking about the thoughts. I'm talking about the face. You have your church face. You have your church words. You have your church smile. You have your church attitude where you're, you're smiling at everybody. You're happy, joyful, you're friendly. Uh, you're just, you know, just... Peachy keen. Um, you, you put that on. When you go to work, you put on a different clothing. You put on your work clothes or you put on your school clothes. You put on your work language, your school language. Uh, I read an article just uh, this last couple of weeks ago about, um, about as far as language goes. And one of the things that the writer says is, if you're thinking about saying something to someone that you know is going to be, could possibly be hurtful, here's a rule of thumb to, uh, to uh, consider. Write down what you're going to say and think about, if you showed that to your mother, how she would feel. Or if you showed that to your daughter and said, this is what I'm going to say to your mom, how would your daughter feel? You see, we have these words, and sometimes I think we need to realize that uh, those words can pull us away from who Jesus is, and that's not who we are. 
So who are you? You're God. You're Jesus' sheep. He knows you. He knows you. You don't need to put on clothes to him. You don't need to try to cover up how you really feel. You don't need to cover up attitudes because he sees that. The book of Psalms 139, the psalmist says, You know everything about me. You know what I'm going to say before I even say it. As your good shepherd, Jesus knows you. You don't need to hide from him. You can be whoever you are. The second question that sometimes we ask, <clears throat> is am I worth the risk? Am I worth the risk? You know, in, in a, a love relationship, uh, you, you may not even realize it consciously, but subconsciously, um, you want to know if you're loved. And when you want to know if you're loved, what you're really uh, asking that person uh, is, am I worth the risk to you? You know, am I am I valuable to you? Jesus says, just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. To Jesus, you're worth the risk. It doesn't matter about your past. It doesn't matter about the struggle you're going through right now. It doesn't matter about the mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter about the clothes you wear other places, the words, the language, whatever. That doesn't matter to Jesus. You're worth the risk. And the question each of us want to ask ourselves is that. And Jesus says, yes. He sacrifices for you. Luke chapter 15. It's a great story at the beginning of the chapter about a a man that has a hundred sheep. And one of them get lost. Uh, Luke 15, 4 says, if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one lost that is lost until he finds it? You know, if you're a businessman uh, and you look at your your year-end statement, if you suffer a 1% loss, you're doing well. You're doing well. Jesus says, a 1% loss isn't good enough for me. If I have 100 sheep and I'm missing one, I'm going to put everything aside to go look after you. There's some of us that have wandered away from the fold. We put other things in front of God. We put other things in front of family. We put other things in front of everything just so that we can have our own way and our own comfort. And it's time for us to realize that Jesus, Jesus comes looking for you. He wants you back. You don't need to worry about anything. The other part of that is he goes ahead of us. He leads the way. The third question that sometimes we ask ourselves is can I ever be at peace? Can I ever be at peace? You know, right now we're in election year. And if you haven't been paying attention, let me tell you, it's brutal out there. Uh, there's people that are, you know, I, I read something just recently, just this last week, about a, a movie star that <clears throat> in 2016, he made the statement that he supported Donald Trump as president for president. He said, I haven't worked a day since then. He said, I've been completely blacklisted from the community in Hollywood because of that one thing. Can we ever be at peace? One of the things that the Good Shepherd does, not only does the Good Shepherd know us, and not only does he sacrifice for us, but he's the one that brings harmony to us. John chapter ten sixteen says, I have other sheep too that are not of this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. Now, the theological meaning to that verse, I believe, from my study, is Jesus talking about the Jews and the Gentiles, and that he's not only just a Messiah to the Jews, but he will be to the Gentiles. And at that, that after his sacrificial death and resurrection, uh, those two will be joined together, the Jews and the Gentiles together. That's the true meaning of this passage. But I don't think it's a stretch to go farther than that, to say that this also talks about denominational affiliation. This also talks about racial affiliation. It also talks about ethnicity. It also talks about gender issues. It talks about the fact that Jesus wants all of us to be unified in him. We will not have peace no matter who becomes president this year. There will not be peace. I can guarantee you that from what the Bible says. Because the peace is not going to be government. Peace is not going to be social. Peace is not going to be cultural. Peace is going to be spiritual. Peace isn't going to come to the masses. Peace comes to our individual hearts. So the three questions that Jesus answers when he says, I want to be your good shepherd, is when you ask, who am I, know that he knows you. When you ask, am I worth the risk, realize that he sacrifices for you, and his answer is resounding yes. 
And when you ask the question, can we ever ever be at peace? He says, yeah, I'll bring harmony. I'll bring harmony to you. Uh, A pastor uh, from, I believe he's in Australia, his name is Joseph Prince. He says this, he says, when we are fearful and worried all the time, we are living as if we don't believe that we have a strong and able shepherd who is tender-hearted towards us, who only leads us to good places, who protects us and lovingly watches over us. So let me ask you this morning again the question that I started out with. Who's your shepherd? Is your shepherd one of the wolves of relationships or or uh, social media or career, hobby, or self? Is, is your shepherd uh, worry? Is your shepherd fear? Jesus wants to be your good shepherd. And so this morning as we close, and praise team, you can come on up and lead us in closing song. Uh, this morning as we close, let me just ask you, is it time to come home? Is it time to come back to the shepherd? And to have him uh, lead you out into paths of, of uh, green pasture. You know, as a sheep, uh, Jesus wants to lead us into green pastures when we'd rather go into the thorns. He'd rather lead us again on, along uh, peaceful streams and we'd rather go against rushing water, which will kill us because sheep can't swim. Jesus wants to be your good shepherd this morning. Will you let him be that? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are here this morning. Thank you for my brothers and sisters that will be listening online to this lesson. I thank you that you are the good shepherd, that you're not an okay shepherd, that you're a good shepherd. Father, I confess to you, Lord Jesus, I confess to you that we are sheep. We wander, we stray, we're stubborn, we're rebellious. Uh, We think we know our own way. We beat ourselves up trying to get away from you when we don't realize that you have it best. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be sheep. Help us to be good sheep in the fact that we follow after you. Thank you for knowing us. Thank you for sacrificing for us. Thank you for bringing peace into a world that's full of strife. And I pray all these things in your blessed and precious and holy name. Amen.